sometimes it's yeah, so I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah, just say it didn't turn out. Oh yeah, I get really annoyed with the lighting because it like shines on my hair like that, so I might put that one on. Um, and then you get Johnny to help. Next, I think this afternoon I'll put the phone numbers on that spreadsheet as well, so that. To so WhatsApp them if there's an issue. Yeah. yeah. Are you bringing that down? Yes. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll come down just before. I'm just gonna get everything sorted and comfortable. Yeah, we have Danny Gormali, who is um, a grandmaster, and he's fantastic at chess. Uh, last week, he, in fact, beat Michael Adams, the English number one, and he's broken 2,700 on Lee Chess. So to be taught by Danny is um, quite an honour, and hopefully you'll learn lots of exciting things in today's lesson. So um, if you want to say hi in the chat, um, and then if you want to ask questions or communicate during the lesson, just raise your hand. Um, using uh, Zoom and we can unmute you and you can talk to the class. So I want everyone to be involved. Um, so, you know, don't just sit back, ask questions and raise your hand because um, the idea is you can learn lots from this. Um, so I don't know if you've seen the pre-work, but I'm just going to briefly go over the pre-work and then we're going to get into the exciting attacking techniques on H7. And I do love a Greek gift. I've had it in many games. What about you, Danny? Have you had it in lots of games? Um, not not particularly actually, but I do remember a one a really example that stuck in my mind. I think we'll look at that a little bit later. It was uh, where I was playing the last round of a weekend congress in Blackpool, and I was playing against some guy who was underrated. Like he was he was doing really well, so he was doing better than his rating. But he got carried away and did the Greek gift in a position where it just didn't work. Yeah, well, we're going to have a look at examples when it works and when it doesn't work because. You know, it's a great attacking technique, but sometimes it doesn't work. And, you know, then you're just a piece down and you've got to rescue the game, which you usually can't do, it, especially at um, Danny's level. <laughs> so um, can everyone see my screen? Should be able to see my screen now. Can you see it, Danny? Yeah, yeah, I can see it fine, yeah. Perfect. So I'm just going to go through the techniques um, of the Greek gift, and then we're going to get into the action. So basically, this is how your pieces are positioned. And the idea is we're going to sacrifice the bishop on h7. I mean, obviously, it doesn't work if there's a knight on f6. So this usually will happen when the knights move to d7, or maybe this knight develops to e7 in the first place instead of to f6. Um, so it gives us great attacking possibilities. And white would take on h7, sacrificing a whole piece. Um, then you can bring the knight to g5. Now, if the king just goes back to g8, um, queen h5 and this checkmate on h7 um, can't be stopped. So sometimes black will be able to escape by moving the king to g6, but nobody really wants the king in the centre of the board with all of white's pieces um, coming towards it. So um, the first game that we sent out in the, um, the pre-work, we're just going to talk through briefly. So yeah, Danny, feel free to explain as we go through. Yeah, uh, just one thing I would say, like what, in the Greek gift, you were saying the knight normally develops to d7, often the knight will go to f6 first, and then we have to play the move e5 to push the knight away from d7. Yeah. Uh, from, from f6, sorry, so that later on this sacrifice will work. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I suppose this is what's happening here. <laughs> um, so yeah. um, we've got a question from the audience. So um, Joseph, um, would you like to ask your question? You should be able to unmute yourself now. Um, so you know if the e5 and the knight f6 is also the reason why when you've got the knight on g5 and you're attacking up h7, later on if he does go king g6, you know with the f5 move, um, is it so you can also on plus on? Because I I saw this, I think I saw this thing ages ago with if you do f5, then the pawn on e5 is there to always on plus on. Um, but yeah, is that another reason or not? Hey Danny, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, yeah, what you said is correct. Like, a lot of people forget about the, the on plus, 
Actually, I, I read something earlier. Apparently, nobody knows how to pronounce it correctly. It's, <laughs> it's French. It's called, I'll pass on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's basically a French word, and it means in passing. So when a pawn goes to f5, we take on f6. And yeah, so so basically, you're understanding there are certain defensive ideas that black, has ha black can have. And the, the, the key question for whether the attack works or not is whether we really can eliminate those uh, defensive ideas. So yeah, you're absolutely right. When we go F5 later on, but obviously we, we want to think in terms of steps. We don't want to jump too far ahead right now. We want to think, you know, like one move at a time sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love attacking in chess. And when I put the bishop on D3, I'm already eyeing up the H7 square for later. Yeah. Um, so um, those that have just joined the meeting, um, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand in the chat and I will unmute you and you can talk. So we want this to be interactive. We want people to ask questions um, so you can learn lots. Um, okay, so um, here uh, White plays Bishop takes H7. And this is getting quite exciting. I'm gonna remove the moves here. So um, White to play, what should White play? You can tell us in the chat, because I think this is fairly obvious. Harry's got his hand up, so I'll... Go on then, Harry, what would you like to say? Um, in this position, we almost fought to play knight g5. And if king to g6, which is um, one of the only moves that stops mate, um, then we play queen to g4, lining up knight takes e6 and king back to h7, queen h5, and then the king goes back to g8 and then knight back to g5 and h7 is unstoppable mate unless you sack your queen. <laughs> very good um danny do you have any comments about what harry said there uh, sound like well i mean all i would say is uh when i when i even i'm a kind of grandmaster or whatever but when i calculate I, I try to take it one step at a time you know maybe my brain works very slow it seemed like you were talking too quickly there almost harry's a fantastic player but i'm always saying slow down he, he, yeah yeah he, but like, i mean good, yeah. that speed is also a strength uh, it's a strength but it could also yeah you get it get it absolutely yeah i mean i mean to be honest with you like top level chess is all about calculation so the, the quicker you calculate look at someone like nakamura has anyone heard of nakamura you're just saying the chat if you've heard of nakamura and i know people have got their hands up i'll get to them in a moment hikaru nakamura yeah well he's a fantastic calculator like he just boom 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 and all the top guys are really good calculators but yeah when you when we talk about attacking play I would say it's a combination of intuition. So we, we're recognizing patterns that we've seen before. So this is a very well-known pattern, this free gift sacrifice. So we, so I'm, I'm, the way I'm approaching the position is I'm thinking, does this work based on what I know from previous experience? And then I check it with calculation. If I think, yes, it works, I go, you know, then I check it with calculation. And if the calculation backs it up, then I'm probably going to go for the sacrifice. And and it's also worth bearing in mind that sometimes to break down your opponent's defensives, you will need sacrifice pieces. Okay, that sounds great. Um, I'll, there's a few questions from the audience. Um, obviously, this is the pre-work we're going through, so I'm not going to take too long. But okay, I'll, I'll just ask Jamie quickly. What do you want to say, Jamie? You can unmute yourself now. That and what you're supposed to do after this is that uh, the king's in a weak position, so you're basically gonna like move the h pawn forward mm. yeah um, definitely then the king pretty much is threatened i think and if he doesn't do anything a normal move yeah i think this relates um, sorry sorry to interrupt i think this relates to the point uh, was a previous kid was calculated a lot and, and he was going queen g4 and he was calculated always but what i would do at this point is i would look at queen g4 but i would also think about other candidate moves and i think you just hit the down of the head if you said h4 was a possibility as well that may well be that h4 is more powerful than queen g4 so again yeah it's, it's, it's often yeah. a good idea to protect the knight and you've got the idea of playing h5 um so like danny's saying if you've got an armory of good moves um you've got to do your candidate moves don't just rush because some moves won't work even if you've seen the idea before so just slow down and think about how you can win because often when you get your king and your opponent's king in the center you kind of know you're going to win but you've got to get it right otherwise you could be losing because you've sacked actually there's an interesting defense when he goes queen g4 so i'll just just yeah. illustrate that you could play the move f5 yeah and if, if i take or pass on 
like the kid was saying earlier, I go knight takes f6, and then I've suddenly I've got more defensive resources. If you go queen g3, maybe I could go knight h5. Yeah, definitely, and it feels... It feels like maybe the black king is running away. I, I, yeah, e5, or even just to go back, knight f6, repeat the position. Yeah. Like, um, uh, if, I, if I don't take on f6, uh, let's say after f5, I go back to queen g3. Can I go maybe, can I go f4 there? Or f4, I guess, yeah, f4. I'll try f4. Um, so I guess I'll take. Right. Uh, because I thought I'd rook f4 there, but actually you got knight e6 checked. So maybe this is also winning, yeah. And then knight takes d8. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I, I think h4 is better. But yeah, maybe queen g4 is an alternative way to win. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, the game. The game was because um, this was for the pre whites. The game. The game had H four in it. Um, so those. Of, I'm just going to remove some hands. So I think Joseph still got his hand up, and then we will move on because we've got lots to get through today. Um, so Joseph, do you, do you want to ask a question? Because your hand's still raised. Oh, sorry. Um, I got just got one question. Can you also think about it this way? Like with all the sacrifices and stuff, you need to know when to do it because. I do like a lot, a lot, a lot of sacrifices and I used to do it like all the time. But then like I knew because just because it looks like it's a good sacrifice, you need to like take time. Because if you do it all the time, then it, I guess it's not good. Yeah, no, that's completely true. Because if you sacrifice the material and you're losing material, then if it doesn't work, then you're likely to lose the game. Um, so yeah, really, really good point you made there. I'm sure Danny would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, totally. I mean, the thing is, as I said before, a lot of it is about intuition. There's certain situations where you think you weigh up uh, whether the sacrifice will work or not. And it also depends on the style. Some people love grabbing material. They love refuting their opponent's sacrifice. A player called Victor Korchnoy is famous for that. He's famous for refuting his opponent's sacrifices. He loved taking material. And someone like uh, for example, uh, Mikhail Tao was when he was younger, he, he loved to sacrifice, but it was interesting. I watched an interview with him the other day, and he said he always used to love sacrificing his queen, but as soon as he got married, he stopped sacrificing his queen because he was like realized that the queen was quite important. <laughs> okay, right. I'm sure you can all find me in one in this position. You can uh, tell me in the um, chat. <laughs> bit of a warm up it is fairly early um, yeah I mean you have there's more than one mate in one here um, it's always nice to chat mate with a pawn right <laughs> yeah thank you Jamie <laughs> okay so um, this was um, the pre-work so we're not going to spend too much time now um, <clears throat> it's important um, for us to show examples of when it doesn't work um, so remember black if black has the defense of bishop f5, then you just a piece down. And yeah, but it's important to calculate that. I think, Sarah, where we took on. So we go back to a position where we, we played bishop takes uh, h7. It'd be easy to rush. The like kid was saying earlier, Joseph, you're saying you sacrifice quite often. Now, you sacrifice, it's fine to sacrifice all the time if, you, if your calculation backs it up. But if I look at that position, I suddenly. I've got to be able to visualise that Black has his defence, Bishop f5 later on. Yeah, and I think once you've seen that defensive idea before, you will look at, look for it when you're contemplating Bishop takes h7. That's why looking at yeah. lots of games and seeing lots of ideas uh, will help your chess. Because if you haven't seen that Black's got this idea of defending, you might think, oh, it's a great gift, I'm going to win. And then look, oh dear, you're a piece down and um, you might as well resign. <laughs> Actually, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, great. So um, we sent that out before the lesson. Um, so we're now going to move on to um, showing a very nice illustrative game. So I'll just remove uh, the moves from my screen and we'll go to the start. And Danny's going to talk us through this game. Mm. So let's go. Yeah, so we see like how we push the knight away from, from important square on F6. So F6 is an important defensive square for black when he castles kingside later on. So this whole variation, Sarah, is uh, is called the. I don't know. Does anyone know the name of this opening for Black? I That's a good. Like this. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone know the name? I yeah. want Gonzalo. In camera. Actually, yeah, these kids are quite knowledgeable. They said Alekhine's defense. It's also called the Russian variation. Oh, I. Bear in mind. 
No, no, yeah. She's so used to play him, you didn't, you didn't know that, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was the Alakine. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's normally commonly known as the Alakine, but he's also known as a Russian variation. And Alakine, Alexander Alek Ilyikin, was a Russian uh, world champ, former world champion in the nineteen late nineteen twenties and nineteen thirties. So yeah, well, I was um, just going through one of um, his games yesterday in my class yesterday. Um, yeah, very instructive. Okay. Actually, somebody said the Russian is Petrov. Yeah, you might be right. I've probably got that completely wrong. I've, I thought the Russian variation was Alekhans, but yeah, maybe, maybe Russian variation is Petrov. So. <laughs> I, I might have a chess nomenclature as well. Don't right. trust my chess knowledge. <laughs> no, it's, it's the names of these openings because you suddenly get, oh, this is now called this and it's called that. And keeps doing a session on rocking games this afternoon. And he's like, oh, you know, there's two openings named after me. And I was like, oh, oh I didn't know that. <laughs> so there's, there's all yeah, sorts of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, different names for openings um but i mean as long as you know the moves and that's enough um but it's, it's nice to know the main moves okay let's um let's move on to get to the exciting part so the bishop goes to d3 and i love putting my bishop on d3 when the knight's not on f6 because you're already eyeing up nice attacking chances absolutely yeah oh now that's <laughs> a good move <laughs> i one thing i would say here is I don't know if anyone analyzes with computers. Or, has anyone who got stockfish? Uh, stockfish. Yeah. I they do because it's on um, it's on Lee Chess. Yeah. Well, I recently um, downloaded Stockfish Twelve, and one of the things I noticed when I was analyzing a lot of openings uh, and middle games with it was it loves playing the move H four, like in lots of different positions, and it's it's amazing how often that move works. Like. Yeah, H4 is a very, very important attacking weapon. I think if you can add that to your repertoire, you'll get a lot of wins because H4 just creates so many attacking ideas. And one of the ideas is White wants to play. Let's just actually go back a move, Sarah, before we play H4. If we understand why the sacrifice doesn't work here, Bishop takes H7, doesn't work because after King takes Knight G5, you got you could take with a Bishop. This is why to remove the defense, we either need to remove the bishop from e7. So often lies where the bishop's on b4, the sacrifice works, or the knight on f6 has gone to some other square, it works. But the bishop on e7, it doesn't work. So the only way that white could make that work is to go h4 first. So he introduces his threat. So then the sacrifice in theory is going to work because then we're going to open up the h fold. Yeah, I um I used to play the um Chateau Alakine attack against the French and that's that includes H4 and I used to get some great attacking positions. I always thought that was a fantastic line. <laughs> Can anyone think of a good move for black in this position, like a good defensive move that would really like think shut down white? Jamie's attacks, dying so. to say something. I'll let Jamie say one more thing. I, I want people to all contribute today, so do feel free to raise your hand. I'll let you say one more thing, Jamie. Um hopefully it's Helpful, what would you like to say, Jamie? There is, there is a way a, to stop it. Uh, but the way a a you could try to a a something like H6, it's although that doesn't work, probably, probably G6 is the most effective. It stops it, and if white and and if white tries to capture it, you capture with the F. Pawn, F pawn, F pawn, and now what? Black has this really good rook looking at the king. king. As well as that, as that, as, as the king is in a pretty much very safe position. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think we need to go one one step at a time. There's a lot of information there. Uh, but H six. I, I think H. He, he mentioned H six. You know, I would have G six, isn't it? I would actually prefer h6 to g6 because I think g6. This is one of the this is one of the reasons why h4 is such a good attacking move because I've also got the option of playing h5, opening up the position. If you go g5, maybe I've got a move like queen e2, threatening queen e4, for example, and you know this could get quite dangerous for black. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, g6 just encourages. Um, white to open up the h file it's, it's not completely impossible sarah to, to play h6 uh, sorry g6 but i would probably prefer h6 um 
but you know, after H6, there might be a possibility of white going G4. Yeah, that was the first thing that came to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think yeah. Isaac has something he wants to say. He's not saying anything. Yeah, yeah. So, Isaac, what would you like to say? Um, I'm thinking you could play F6 because it's putting more pressure on G5, so the so the knight can't move there. But if you take F, but if you take F6 with your E pawn, then the knight can take back and you can never sacrifice your bishop on H7. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just, actually, this is an interesting moment because you said F6. Um, just to go back, if H6, I might think as white about G4, just, just to go back and move, Sarah. Okay, uh, um, after H6, yeah. I might think about G4 because... Um, G5 is a useful attack in weapon for white. But, yeah, but this is what you would expect from a hacker because somebody playing H4, uh, well, actually, I wouldn't even say hacker now because computers have shown us that H4 is, a, is just a good move. It's not even a hacker's move. It's just a good move. So everybody should be playing it. But if we go back to um, the position after he said F6, I think that might even allow bishop takes H7 anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, um, in the chat, Joseph said F5 as an improvement on F6. A absolutely. I think F5 is a move I would play because I think that shuts that really that, that bishop on D3 is is really like, is, is probably White's most important piece in the position because it's such a useful attacking piece. Probably more, that bishop on D3, this kind of position is more valuable than the White Queen, honestly. Like, but once you go F5, you're killing that bishop. Strategically, it's, it's dead. So the only way to keep that bishop alive is to go for that line. Sorry, that kid just, what was it? <laughs> yeah, Joseph said G4 to follow up. <laughs> yeah, G4 is, is an option. But if, if, I, if I play, let's say I play, I mean, G4 is risky for me as well because I'm also opening up my king. Um, so I've lost my voice there. I was getting so excited with <laughs> yeah, this position. Excited, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. G4 looks a little bit risky for white. It, it's very, it's, it's one step at a time, right, in the opening. So... I will take advantage of your weaknesses if you allow me to, but if I'm playing G4, that also creates a certain element of risk. Yeah, because maybe black could ignore that because white, yeah. white pieces aren't really that well developed. Knight B4 would be a good move here. Knight B4, and if, if you take on F5, I'll take on D3 and then take out the rook, and then your attack is stone dead. Get rid of that killer bishop. Yeah, excellent. Um, okay, um, I know a few people have got their hands up, but I'm going to move on because we've got lots to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to say anything, you can do in the chat. Okay, Joseph said, what about knight g5? Um, so is that in this position, Joseph? Uh, so it's an interesting idea. That's a good idea. You know what I would play then? I would probably, I understand the idea is after h6 is just to give up the piece and go queen h5 maybe. But I would play h6 anyway. And when you go queen h5, I don't take because I'm really scared of your attack. Like yeah, if I take takes, takes and then we've got all sorts of G6 things and absolutely I would go Queen E8 and that basically ah. kills your attack. Like um, Move, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I mean if, if I get into an end game here, I'm very happy because I'm not gonna get mated. Yeah, okay. Uh, brilliant. And um, that's some great analysis, guys. So let's um let's just go back to the game. So H4 was played and then in the game, um, we just get to where we are. Um, white, black went c5. I mean, black being a French player needs to get some um, pressure on white center and needs to sort of sort out this side of the board. So yeah. black was just ignoring what white was doing. So white to play. What should white play here? Any ideas? Let us know in the chat. So lots of people saying bishop takes h7. Now remember, bishop takes h7 is a move that if it works, it wins. If it doesn't work, you're just going to be a piece down. So it's easy to say it when we're doing analysis, but would you guys play that in a real game? So I'm just going to give you a minute to do a bit of calculation there. Okay, William says he would. Gonzalo said he wouldn't because when knight g5, bishop takes g5. That might be the reason for playing h4, Gonzalo. Get this rook into the attack, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Amelie said she would. 
Harry Wood. Ooh, this is looking exciting, Danny. Think <laughs> of the class wood. Would you play it against Danny Gormali? Would it be your opportunity to beat a grandmaster? I'm sure he'd never let you have that opportunity. But okay, no, that one's going to beat well, you, Danny. Probably be, probably be beating me very soon, you know. <laughs> yeah, well done. So Bishop takes h7. Now Black actually didn't take the bishop because um, yeah. the knight goes to g5, and that shows the other purpose of h4. Because if Bishop takes, pawn takes, and look, we've got. Uh, the only thing I would say was actually that c5 was a very bad move because I think you had to do something on the king's side. You had you had to realise that, that bishop takes h white played h4 was a specific idea in mind, which was to take on h7. So if black was more experienced, it would have actually not played c5. C5 is a pointless move. In attacking positions, one factor which is like important above all is a factor of time. You know, have I got the time to carry it out, out that attack? If, if white didn't take on h7, black would have the time to defend against that, play the correct move, which is something like f5 or h6 or g6, as somebody, somebody else suggested, do something defensive on the king's side. But c5, if I take on c5, then you've got, you actually shouldn't take back. You should probably play something like h6 or f5, you know? Yeah, you should always be looking at your opponent's checks, captures and threats. And here, Black's king feels very weak. So c5, as Danny said, is a bad move. I've um, just got one question from Joseph. Um, yeah. Should white play knight g5? Are you talking about now, Joseph, in this position or before you played h4? Um, let me unmute you. Ask, ask the question, Joseph, please. Um, so I think maybe you could try knight g5 now. Now, well, if bishop takes h7, it's winning. Yeah. Go knight g5. I'm just saying, like, if you want it to be interesting, like, I know bishop takes h7 probably win, but... It's a move, and it wins, so I wouldn't need... You don't need to yeah. swear. But I guess knight g5, because it's not check, it's not forcing whilst... It probably is good. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of options. Yeah, I mean, what he said... I mean, it seems to me that he wants to be different from everybody else because rather than go for the one that wins, you, you want to be interested, right? But but I think you got to be careful. There's like a difference between being creative and you know if you got a, if you got a variation that wins, you should reject you should reject it. You know, you yeah. should just play. forcing moves are, are great. Okay, um, Jamie, I will get to you in a bit. I just want to go get through a few moves here. <clears throat> so King H8 was played because Black realised it was losing. So yeah, you've won a pawn, but how do you win the game? Um, suggest a move for White now, please, everyone. Just tell us in the chat. Um, you can say it privately, um, or you can say it. Someone said, I thought someone was suggesting Queen H5 now, but I uh, know they weren't losing after that G5. So, yeah, what would you play here? Because you know you've done something right if your opponent doesn't take the bishop. They've declined the sacrifice. You know you're doing well, but you don't want to be just a pawn up. You want to get checkmate, and this king is... Yeah, you, you could just come back like bishop b4, but, you know, white, white should... Like, all good attacking players should have good instincts. You know, they should have... A, it's almost like a, Magnus Carlsen calls it a spidey sense. You know, when the, the opponent's gone wrong, you get a spidey sense, and you kind of start tingling. His body senses start tingling, and you realise that you could go in for the kill. You know, like all all good players have this like killer instinct. Same with any kind of sport. You know, if you've got like a footballer who's really good at football, he's very good at understanding when the opposition got wrong, when he could got a chance to score. Same with chess. You know, same with anything really. Um. Yeah, completely. So we've had like um knight g five. Um, we've also had bishop g five now. I will say one thing about Bishop G5 before Danny adds his comments. Um, I know you want Black to take it, but you can't assume your opponent will take a piece. So you can't assume they'll take it. And I mean, Black could ignore that and do something to get rid of the pressure. In fact, maybe uh, King takes H7. I, I'm not no, sure. I think he can now because it's, yeah. different, it's a different position. If you take, I take out the Queen. If you go check, I go King H6. And now you don't have, because if you imagine after check, king h6, normally the bishop would still be on c1. So I'd have some kind of discovered check with a knight, but now I don't have that discovered check. So the attack, maybe it's still good. 
but it's not it's not so clear you know yeah and also um i suppose they let me just go back i suppose they don't even have to take the bishop in i'd, I'd strongly consider that if i was black here because i want i want to win yeah. it's a free piece and i can get away with it i would but i mean also black could consider other moves because oh. i'm not forced to take that and i wouldn't even consider taking that if i'm honest no no it's absolutely so yeah. um lots of people said um knight g5 which was the correct move played in this game um with the idea being queen h5 is coming next and um, we're trying to get this rook into the game as well so i don't mind yeah. taking now because that gets the rook into the game yeah generally speaking white would often sacrifice a piece uh to open up the h fault the situation is that he never he never minds black winning a piece as long as the h file gets open so it's worth bearing that in mind like the the H file getting open against the Black King is worth at least a piece, sometimes a rook, sometimes more, you know, um, because it's such a dangerous attacking weapon for White. Brilliant. So um, Black tries to defend with pawn to g6, and now White to play. Now this time, message me privately your move. Okay, don't write it to everyone in the chat. Just gives people time to work it out. So just message me privately, and then we'll talk about the options after so I'll just give you a bit of time to think about it because as Danny said um don't rush you know you know you've got a great position here but if you don't find the best move uh, you're likely to you know not win the game so this is the time yeah you know you know I I I, I wrote a book uh, on attacking play Sarah it's called making the castle king and I put this game in my but I can't even remember what the correct move is it <laughs> Danny doesn't know the answer okay Danny homework for you white to play what's your white play <laughs> well, um, I'll probably go. Don't, am I allowed to say, yeah? No, you can't. You can message me privately, like the. Oh, ah, right. <laughs> That's going to give it away. Give them a minute to have a think. I've had okay. a few answers in, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to give them a bit more time. Let's have two minutes to think about this. I mean, that's that's not a huge amount of time in a game. Um, you'd spend longer than that, hopefully. It's quite. It's getting quite tricky. Though. This position is a lot, lot less straightforward than, uh, okay. than than when he takes the bishop. You know, then it's all kind of force play. I go check, try and go for mate on h seven. But but here is is a bit more tricky. Yeah, just remember to message privately so it doesn't give away your move to the whole class. So if you've got your move, then double check it because. There's lots going on. Yeah, just imagine you're playing your biggest rival, or maybe you're, you're playing Danny Got Mally here. <laughs> you want to be a grandmaster. Yeah, well, that's not much of an achievement being me. <laughs> he, Danny's very modest. He did just beat um, Michael Adams the other day. He's 2,700, and you probably won't beat Danny. <laughs> It was quite, I was quite lucky when they, he kind of mouse. Well, he blundered, but he. Made your own luck. I mean, you were very close to beating David Howe. Yeah, I should have won against David. That was. Oh, you made your own luck, um, and you came, you came very high in that competition. So. Yeah, it was good. Good. Uh, I think. I think actually, a lot of uh, if you're good at internet blitz or internet rapid play, a lot of it is about tactics, really. Like even more than normal chess. Like classical chess is very much about tactics as well, but uh, blitz is just like smash bang wallop. You, you know that, Sarah. You know, you, if if you if you're very good at spotting tactical ideas, combinations, and stuff like that, does anyone here do puzzle rush? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, do, do puzzle rush. Uh, it's very, very, it's very, very useful for uh, getting good at blitz. But the one thing I would say that if you really want to get good at classical, you, you know, there's a lot of very good blitz players out there who aren't very good at classical chess. So I think it's, it's like a mixture. You know, you've got to have that ability to sacrifice. Like that kid was saying earlier, he was sacrificing all the time. But you've also got to have an element of patience as well. To be a really, really top player, you can't just play all your moves like instantly. You've got to, you know, one thing I noticed when I played juniors, Sarah, yeah. is they play just like so fast. And yeah. they always offer they always offer draws. A lot of them offer draws in like totally lost positions yeah. as well. <laughs> it's offensive. <laughs> yeah, and I, I say don't ever offer draws. If you'd ever offer draws, you've got a massive advantage, and you know slow down a, a bit as well. You know, yeah. life isn't. 
to uh, Magnus Carlson's video last night and um, where he talked about Ben Harmon's game against Borgov and he was like, how offensive that he offers a draw. <laughs> Um, yeah, you shouldn't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually watched that TV show. I don't. I didn't really enjoy it to be to be quite honest with you. I didn't think it was very good, but <laughs> it got, got a lot of attention. So obviously, I must have done something right. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Right. We, we're we're getting distracted. So what moves have we got? Um, we've got um, knight takes f7. We've got h5, and we've got queen. Uh, let me do a different color. Queen d3. They're the three moves that I've had. Uh, through, I'm just checking the chat see if there's anything else. Okay, so let's go through them in order and I'll, I'll leave that to, for Danny to do. <laughs> so, um, should we start with Queen D3, Danny? What are your comments on Queen D3? Uh, Queen D3 um, would probably be slightly, yeah, it's an interesting move, but it probably wouldn't be the first move I'd look at just because. I mean, it's an interesting move, but it's slightly obscure. I'd be slightly concerned about the possibility of black going knight b4 as well, because if, if you play knight b4 uh, and then white goes queen g3, we can actually grab the rook, maybe take on c2 and take on a1. But having said that, King, sorry, yeah, yeah, carry on with that variation. So queen g3, so knight b4, queen g3, take on c2, king, king f1, knight takes a1. I'd say having said that, White well, has probably still got a winning attack because I could start playing moves like h5. But, you know, ideally, in an ideal situation, you sacrifice without, sorry, you, you win without having to sacrifice. Like, there's a former world champion called Anatoly Karpov, and we were talking about patience. He was probably one of the most patient players ever, you know. Like, Magnus Carlsen is very patient. Karpov was incredibly patient. He would only sacrifice when he knew the, the sacrifice, the attack was winning. You know, where he had the total build up and then he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't play Queen D3, give it up a rook and then sacrifice. You know, he would just sacrifice when it's absolutely certain that he's, he, he knows he's going to be winning. You know, he wouldn't just give away the rook unless he was absolutely certain. So, yeah, I'll probably would. Doesn't, um, doesn't it give Black a bit of time? I mean, obviously, Knight B4 is tempting. Does it give. Black a bit of time to try and unravel. Uh, not. Yeah, maybe not. somebody like King G seven is possible. Although then I'm a bit slightly worried about Knight takes F seven. Maybe Queen yeah. E eight is an option. Uh, probably Black is lost anyway. Like Queen yeah. D three, I, I reckon that is one possible move which probably wins. Yes. But honest to God, I don't know. You know what the correct move is. I can't remember actually the correct move here. It's well, so we'll get embarrassing. Her. Um, so um, the other option that people said was knight f7. I'm going through the only one. Yeah, yeah, knight takes f7. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do for two reasons. Firstly, yeah, I would. Sorry, yeah, you have to take otherwise the queen is hanging. But yeah, uh, bishop takes g6. Yeah. It's an interesting option, but I think there's one thing that's happened here is white has given away a lot of material. And sometimes when you give away material, one way to beat off the attack is to give back the material. So, for example, on the last move, yeah, Rook G7 is a good move. Another move I, I might consider, instead of Rook G7... It's not the Queen D2, but we can play Rook takes Bishop there. Um, sorry, what's another move you'd consider here? Yeah, yeah, I would consider... Sorry, sorry, yeah, I would consider Queen G8, because oh, yeah. let's imagine you went Queen H5 check, right? Yeah. Rook H7 only moved, because if King G7 is Queen H6, mate. So rook h7 only move. Yeah. Bishop takes h7. Queen takes h7. Queen takes, yeah, but then queen g8 doesn't really matter. Yeah. So queen queen h7. King h7. And white might think, oh, wow, you know, what all this material, forgetting about the fact that he had to give up some material in the first place. So black, black is actually not standing that badly here because he's got two pieces for the rook. Yes, he's, he's locked pawns down, but his pieces are going to get very active. He's going to go down c6. He's going to take on d4. You know, White shouldn't allow this game to go to an end game. He should not allow the game to go to an end game. He should be winning this game before it before he gets to an end game. Yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go knight takes f7 because of those reasons. I think it's too easy for, for black to stop the attack. Um, yeah, brilliant. So um h5 was the move that was played in the game, and quite a lot of people um suggested yeah. that move. So well done if you did. Um so yeah, I mean. The idea is to get the rook into the game because obviously we've got a bishop 
Um, Knight, Bishop, Queen, all in the attack. We want to get this Rook in the attack as well. Ooh. I'd be pretty scared yeah. if I was black. Well, the thing, remember what I said earlier, Sarah, that when you, when you open up the H file, it's worth a piece. So why say, like, I don't care that you take my Knight uh, of G5, the H file is worth more than a piece. And he's absolutely right. Like if that if it wins, it wins, you know. So we don't need to worry. Like so, the, the question is: after Bishop G five, H G six, King G seven, why is that attack winning? Yeah, because people that wrote H five, um, it would have been nicer to put a full variation. A few people did, but you can't just play H five hoping it will work. You need to calculate, um, quite deep because otherwise you could be in a bad position where your material down. Um, so. Sorry, what were we looking at? Pawn takes, Danny. Yeah, and then yeah, let's say I went after pawn takes. Uh, something like I've I've got two candidate moves here. I can either go maybe f six, f five, or even king g seven, right? Yeah. So king g seven. How do you win? Okay, um, Harry, you you want to say something? Let's just think about this, and then um, and then I'll let you talk. Same, Jamie. <laughs> We got some some key people in the audience, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'll I'll let you ask your questions in a moment. Let's just think about this then. White to play. So we've got some Queen H fives in the chat, some Queen G fours. Remember in chess, you can only make one move. I hate it when I'm thinking, right, both these moves look good, which one should I play? And I end up wasting loads of time deciding. And it can be it's it can be a lot easier if it's just one move that looks good. <laughs> yeah, there's a very star move, I think, in this position that I'm starting to see, which is easy to miss. But again, it's with the idea of opening up the age file for the rook. Well, I think I've seen it as well, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if it, I think you, you may play this move after queen h5. So queen h5, bishop takes c1, and there, why it's got a star move, I think. I yeah. could be wrong. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I know which move you're talking about. It looks... Looks good fun, actually. I love attacking my opponents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, William has, yeah, but William said um, Bishop C1 and then Bishop F8, which is, um, yeah, a very interesting idea because that Bishop's kind of in the way and the idea of- Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sometimes the pieces can actually get in the way of your own attack. Pieces and pawns. Uh, there's certain variations to silly defense. You take on h7 check, the, the black king is on g8, and the black goes king h8, and then the, the, your own pawn gets in the way of your own attack because you like the h file to be open. So here the, the bishop is effectively a pawn. We need, but the difference is now we can move it. So we can move the bishop to g8. Maybe not immediately. Well, do we go bishop g8 here or do we go? Maybe we go queen h5 or we go bishop g8. So my two candidate moves are I'll probably go queen h5 actually. Queen yeah, H5. I, I think. I don't actually know the answer. We'll find out in a moment. But um, I think Queen H5 looks good because we want to get the Queen in place first. Um, if you go Bishop D8 immediately, I could go F takes G6. Ah, um, yeah, and stop the Queen from getting to H5. Absolutely, yeah. So it's important the, the sequence that you play the moves. So Queen H5, yeah. <laughs> and then you've probably got to take on uh, C1, what else? And now I go Bishop G8. Excellent, and now we've freed up the square. We just want to play queen h7 next. And if, if rook takes bishop, you can tell me in the chat the full variation needing to mate. It's not, not too long, so you should be able to work that out. And then um, I'll let um, Amelie and Jamie talk because they've got questions. So right in the chat, the variation to mate if rook takes g8, please. And... Um, yeah, Amelie, you've not said anything yet, so I'll let Amelie ask her question. Yeah, Amelie, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, can can you go Queen H8 in this when they go Rook takes G7? Can you can you go like um, can you go if you go Queen if they go Rook takes Bishop? Can yeah. You, can you go? Queen to h7, h7. Yeah. Yep. And then where's the checkmate in one move? And then checkmate in one move, I would say it's queen takes f7. Excellent. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. People writing that in the chat as well. Fantastic. Well done, Emily. So that was the idea behind, yeah, yeah, that was really good. That was the idea, but sorry, behind bishop g8 because I wanted to free up the queen. So the bishop on g h7 is blocking my attack. 
Uh, but it's more powerful to go queen h7 rather than rook h7. That's why I kind of waited with this bishop g8. I, I just wonder here if black has got a defence, like a crazy looking defence to go knight f6. Does that work? Um, well, um, so, oh no, just queen h8. <laughs> but then king takes g6. And then bishop h7. And then if I'm running away, oh, you're just running away with your king. Hang on. No, 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 probably not. Probably this not. Is covered by the bishop. Don't forget those backward bishop moves. I remember Alex was playing this game in Florence and he was yeah, completely yeah. losing. And his opponent had force mate in three and forgot about a backwards bishop. So 22 oh, months yeah. later, it was amazing. So I thought, oh, he's going to be in the right mood when he loses. And then <laughs> backwards. So don't forget. Yeah, that. yeah. But I think bishop h7 is better than taking on f6. So bishop h7. So if you go king, king g5, I've got queen g7 queen check. G7. And then King f4, queen g3 mate, yeah, because the bishop on h7 covers your escape square. And if you if you take on h7, I take, uh, so, yeah, take, yeah, take with the queen, king g, this must be checkmate. This yeah. queen h5, I think, probably checkmate, right? Um, yeah, because then we're and then rook h4. Oh no, g3, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, rook h4 I can win the queen anyway, so that should be winning, yeah. yeah. Oh, Maybe There's probably several ways to bait here. Oh, bring another piece in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> rook, even rook takes c1. I maybe I could win slowly. You know, yeah. I don't, don't even... I, I want to castle, but the bishop's in the way. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, I, I can't castle here, can I? It should be a rule where you could castle taking the bishop, but you yeah. can't. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, we're having some fun there, right? Some questions, right? I'm going. To, people are desperate to ask. Um, okay, right. Go on then, Jamie. You're desperate to speak, so go ahead. You can speak now, Jamie. You're unmuted. What did you want to say? Can you go to this? At the start. Yeah. Uh, no, at the very start. Here? No, when black played C5. Oh, wow. We are going far back. Okay. Um, let's. Okay. Instead of C5. Black could try to play a defensive move. Probably the best defensive move is just G6 it's or, then, or H6 or F5. Like one of those defenses. Yeah, I think we, uh, talk, yeah. Didn't we? yeah, we established that earlier, but it's good that he actually remembers. It was the problem is his dead um, Pansan. Um, it's, it's good that he, he, Jamie remembers that because, as I say, I think the thing about all these techniques is all you got to do is remember them. You know, like if you, it, it does take time because don't think that the next time you play, you'll be able to remember all this stuff. It probably, you're probably not going to be able to remember all this stuff. And, and don't get worried if you don't because, you know, like it takes a while to, you probably need like, you know, I don't know, hours and hours of study of this sort of stuff to really yeah, it's let it sink in. Danny, it's like we've seen this idea so many times in our sort of chess Absolutely. career and we've seen the idea that Bishop F5, obviously not in this position, but can stop it. It, it becomes automatic. It's like when you do the times table, you do like two times two, four <laughs> times four. It's like it's like automatic to chess players because they know that... And the Greek gift sacrifice actually is interesting. I don't know if anybody knows the... Uh, you know, the origin of the uh, term, the Greek gift sacrifice. Is anyone aware of that? Yeah. Us. I've got a few people looking, I uh, want to ask questions. Should we do the questions first and then you can- Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, yeah. right, so Jamie, I'll let you ask. Right, Isaac, what would you like to say? You can unmute yourself now. Um, if you go to when um, white plays Bishop G8. Uh, yeah, so where are we? Oops, um, <laughs> there were so many variations now. Where were we? <laughs> there we go. Here we are. Um, um, oh, okay, that was a different position. Right, let me just go from the um, so king h8, knight g5 on the h5, and then we went. Yeah, yeah, queen g4 is another idea which is quite strong as well. Yeah, just re like strength for the attack, but then you don't allow this knight b4 move the tempo. So I'd probably prefer that to, knight, to queen d3. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so it was was it this position? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah, saying that... there might be a defence there, I think. Um, so if black moves um rook e eight, um, isn't there a bit of a defensive move? Because if white goes queen eight seven, then black's got some luft on f eight. Yeah, 
and then he can yeah. go round to E7 and and maybe move round D D6 um, or he or I could play. Or he could get to <laughs> It doesn't quite work because that rook was defending. Yeah, it's a nice try. I, I think. I think. Um, uh, what I like is the fact they're looking for defensive ideas as well. You know, you can you can be very one dimensional in chess and just think about the attack. But okay, that that idea didn't work. But he's actually looking for a defensive idea, which is very clever. I think. Um, yeah. So um, Danny and I have set up some questions for you guys to have a go at. So I think we'll move on to those now because yeah. we've only got ten minutes left. Um, hopefully you've seen the ideas. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the examples on the screen and then you just need to privately message me and Danny. Try not to do it to everyone. I know you can do that by accident and it's okay if you make a mistake, but try and just message us privately with your answer. Um, so we've put quite a lot together. We might not get through them all, but you're going to have access to this study after the lesson. So you can have a go at them at home um, as well. So I will move on to that now and see how you get on with these. So let's do example number one. I just need to get rid of the thing. So now the idea is it's white to play. What should you play? And I want a full variation. I don't want the first move. And remember in all of these, we're looking at um, the Greek gift, but the Greek gift might not work. Um, <laughs> Harry's desperate for me to unmute him. Okay, last, last time though, Harry, because we need to move on. Hopefully it's something important. Go ahead. Um, and also, it isn't very, very, very important, but it's easy to get on the study. I already on it. Oh, yeah, I noticed. Yeah, you're very clever. Excellent. All right. Yeah, I'll send it out afterwards. But yeah. I'll tell you how to. Just... <laughs> no, I don't want people to do that because I don't want them to see the answers. So let's not do that. Right. OK. Um, let's move on. Right. Wait to play here. Now, write down what you would play. Try and do it privately to me and Danny. Um, but I want full variations. It's about learning to think ahead. And you need to be confident playing this move in a game. So white to play, what should white play? And I don't want just one move, please. And I don't want, I'll play this or this. Remember in a game of chess, you can only make one move, unfortunately. Yeah, do send the, your answers to Danny as well. I'd be interested to see who gets the full, the full solution, right? And remember to look for the best defences for black. Don't just play the move you want them to play. Even if you're not sure, just have a go. Are you getting lots of messages through, Danny? No, I'm not getting any messages at all, I don't think. Oh, so Unless I'm miss missing them. Send, send them to Danny as well. Um, that's okay. Don't send them to me. Send them to Thera. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah, so again, yeah, you know, I'll say if, if I was white, I'd be drawn to a certain idea here, you know. Yeah, and hopefully if you've been focusing on this lesson and you know what the topic is, you'll be considering only one move and then deciding whether to play it. So I think we'll... Oh, here we are. Oh, here we are. Uh, uh, all right, I can. Uh... Hmm. Strange. Answer. Oh, no, privately. Oh, no, no, yeah, so I'm getting these messages, right. Uh, I yeah, I just, yeah. 
I didn't want to. Some, some of them, shall, shall, shall I explain some of them? Yeah, sure, go ahead. So somebody said knight f6, uh, that was Cameron. Uh, but after e takes, uh, sorry, after you take on f6, it, it, what, when, we, when we're attacking, what we do is we try and reduce our opponent's options. And I'll be slightly concerned that after e takes, yeah, so he's, he's saying knight g6, queen h5 is winning. Absolutely correct, right? But the problem is you've, you've got to analyze all your opponent's options because remember chess is a very complicated game and they might, they might not be compliant with you. They might not play the options. Exactly. There's a point that you can go knight f5 he's, and after- Danny's next lesson on black holes. <laughs> We're covering this later. <laughs> yeah, after knight f5, queen, queen h, uh, knight f5, queen h5, you can go h6, stopping the mate. And if you play some move like, I mean, maybe white is still doing well here because he can play some move like g4. We but, are a piece up, I suppose. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think this is less clear. I wouldn't go for this, to be honest. I, I, you know, I think there's simpler ways to win. And I think the move that he played in the game, instead of uh, knight f6, which quite a few people have given. So Harry Bryant said, knight takes h7, king takes, queen h5, king g8. Yeah, it's all forced. As Danny said, yeah, limiting the options, because you can't go to g6 now, so this is all forced. Yeah, so attacking players often about redu reducing your opponent's options. That's why we say when we're... I'm really attacking players, you know it. When, when we when we talk about um, attacking play, we're often thinking about calculation and forcing moves. If we play forcing moves, they reduce our opponent's defensive options. So here we go, knight g5. Yeah. Rook d8. Queen takes f7. Yeah, absolutely correct. So we've got a minimum draw. King, king h8. Oh, let's stop here. Right, white to play. Class, what should white play here? Yeah. This is another really instructive idea. If you've not seen it before, commit this to your memory bank. Oh, no, Harry, stop moving the pieces. <laughs> oh, is it, Danny? There we go. Right, stop, pause here. Okay. What should White play? Someone's just... We've got to get another piece into the attack, because as Danny said, we've got a forced draw. And it's always good to work out you've got a forced draw. But, um, as Harry said, F4 is the winning move because we're going to get the rook round to h3 using a rook lift. Yeah. Um, so we, we could go knight takes e6 or something like that, but uh, but f4 is, is much stronger because the more we, we, the general rule with attacking play is the more def, uh, attacking play pieces you have in play, the more likely your attack is to succeed. So the more, there's a saying, which is a very easy saying to remember, which is bring all your pieces to the party. <laughs> Obviously, you can't do that at the moment because all this social distancing. And <laughs> to parties. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so the important rule, and actually the rule is, the general rule is, if you've got more attackers than your opponent has got defenders, your attack is very likely to succeed. So this position, why is, after F4, Rook F3, why is attacking with a Rook, the Knight and the Queen, the Black is really only defending with a Knight. So it's not enough, it's not enough defensive uh uh, capabilities for black. Yeah. So F4 is just crushing. Sorry, Danny. I'm just going to, there's a few new people with their hands raised. <clears throat> so I want to get people's, uh, new people's questions in. So I think Cameron was first. So Cameron, um, you can speak now and he might be talking about his idea of knight F6. So Cameron, do you want to talk? Yeah. yeah. Can, in, instead of going F4, can't, yeah, instead of going F4 here, can't you go queen h5 and after king there, then you go h4, f4? Well, actually, um, I'm sure Danny will agree with me, but it's a lot yeah. um, better to play um, this move when the king's stuck on the h file. because Yeah, because goes, again, he's reducing your options because with f4 the other way around, and maybe we can start playing king f8. Well, no, we can't because of the mate, but... I think you, you got the right idea, but it's it's probably better to have it with a queen on f7. Another variation worth mentioning, Sarah, is after instead of f4, if I go queen h7, check, king f8, queen h8, there's a defensive move for black, which would be very easy. It'd be very easy to rush into that. Go queen h5, you know, or even immediately, don't even take on f7. You think queen h7, king f8, queen h8 is oh, game yeah. over. Right? Not g8. Yeah. Knight G8. Knight G8, absolutely. Brilliant. And, and it's, 
not no longer mate. Okay, so I'm just because we're getting close to the end of the lesson, I just want to get let people have a go here. So um Gonzalo, you've got a question, so I'll let you speak. You've not said anything yet. So Gonzalo, and then I'll go to William and then um we'll be finished unless anyone has got any further questions. Okay, go on then Gonzalo. Yeah, I was just saying that instead of a four, what about we can you were saying, I didn't hear that. Instead of F4, how about what? Uh, rookie one. Yeah, I mean, um, it's the same idea, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think that's just as good. It's just a different way of playing the same idea, which which is very, very effective. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's not slight, uh, quite as good because the knight can come to F5. But knight F5, then I've got... Then I've got... Yeah, then I've got... Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it's probably... Yeah, because rookie four... You think about knight f5, rookie four. I'm not friendly rook h4. And if I go to rookie three, then you could take on e3. So it's very important to understand that you may have, even though his position, often you think this game is over. You get you relax, you think this this is over. And you forget about the fact that sometimes they've got defensive ideas. Yeah. Okay, final question then from William. He's not said anything yet. William, would you like to let us know your question, please? Um, instead of playing knight g5, could you play knight f6 check? Um, I think we talked about that. I think Cameron had suggested that. Oh, you mean here in this position? Yeah. 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 Oh, this, um, is, I, this is probably also winning. So I can take, take, and it, my only defensive idea is knight f5 because otherwise you're going to go queen h6 and queen. So knight f5. Mm. Now, maybe some idea like g4 is very strong, like g4. Uh, threatening to to take, but maybe because because uh, has Black got Queen D8 here? Maybe you can go Queen D8, trying to eliminate that pawn. And then if you go Queen G5 and you take on F5, uh, eliminating the knight, then I've got Rook H8. <laughs> Black Rook G8. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's easy to you know it's easy to think oh everything wins. But that's why you have to be very careful. And I think a lot of it is, I mean, all these lines, they all look very, very similar and they all kind of look like they're winning. But a lot of it comes down to intuition. You've studied a lot. You've seen all these different examples. I would probably go knight takes h7 and queen h5 and knight g5 for that reason rather than I did with knight f6 because I've seen so many different examples. But the difference between them is not that big, you know. It's a very, it's very fine line between a line that is winning and a line that is not winning. Yeah, and that's why you need to slow down. Um, Okay, so um, that concludes the lesson. I've just put the link um, to the study in the chat. You will get an email about it as well. Um, I'd encourage you to go through the examples. Um, there's loads of mat material here, and this is a great attacking um, thing that you can use in your games. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Danny, and I hope everyone's enjoyed the lesson. And um, yeah, we'll see some of you in 15 minutes for the Black Holes session. So um, I'm just going to... Stop the recording now.